So I've made one or two tracks in my time. Uh, you may remember my tracks from Trials Evolution and Trials Fusion. Uh, as you can see behind me, got a Trials Fusion flag, which was given to me by the uh, fine folks over there at Red Links. It's also got all their signatures. So uh, they gave this to me as part of a kind of a thank you for, for all of the effort and tracks I put into Trials Evolution. Even though they weren't all fantastic at first, I, I did learn a lot. And uh, so my final, my final 60% of the tracks I made were actually really good. Or I think they were, I think they were pretty good. So uh, I've got some tips about how to make a good Trials track yourself. We have four months remaining until Trials Rising comes out and this is gonna be, once again, the first time that a Trials game has been on a Nintendo console, so that's super exciting. Uh, we've also got it coming out for Xbox One, PS4, and PC on Steam. So uh, I'm, I'm incredibly excited about it. I'm really looking forward to it. It's my number two most anticipated game uh, so far, right now. As of this moment, it's number two. I think everybody knows what number one is. But anyway, uh, I wanted to make this video because there's probably gonna be a lot of people who are gonna be experiencing the Trials editor for the first time. They're gonna you know, try their hand at making their own track. Uh, people that you know, are gonna play the game for the first time or you know, the, the old veterans who have been around since uh, close to the beginning, that's me. Uh, we're gonna be making tracks uh, just like crazy, just pumping them out as quickly as we can, uh, and it's gonna be a lot of fun. But I wanted to make this video not so much as a tutorial for how to build a track, uh, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link in the description below for the uh, official Trials Evolution tutorials that was actually put out by Red Wings by Trials Games and their official YouTube channel. Uh, they could do a much better job than I could whenever it comes to telling you how to build a track. Uh, what this video is going to do is the, the always and never do's whenever you try to build a track. Uh, and I wish somebody had kind of uh, filled me in on all this stuff whenever I first started building because my first tracks were not good. I mean, they were okay uh, for, for being brand new tracks, for me never having touched the editor before. I mean, they functioned, they had a beginning and some obstacles and then an end, so I guess that's something. I didn't really know what made a good track, what made a bad track, what, what, make, what makes people wanna play your track, what makes them stand out. So, so I'm gonna go over some simple rules, uh, six things to always do and five things to never do. Uh, so, so once again, uh, this video is not going to explain how to build a track. Uh, it's going to basically tell you all the do's and do nots whenever it comes to building your track. So we'll start off with the uh, always. Always, always, always. First thing, always choose a theme. Uh, always have a theme for your track. Even if the theme is simple or if it's been done before, uh, it doesn't have to be a complex theme or something that no one has ever seen before. Uh, it just has to be done well. So uh, one of the examples that I, I would like to bring up is like a beach. Like uh, a lot of people have done like, you know, palm trees and the beach and kind of an oasis setting. Uh, it's a relatively simple thing uh, and it's been done probably hundreds of times. Uh, but you can still make a beach theme to track and make it stand out. Uh, you can, uh, you know, just make it, make it good quality, make it, make it make sense. Uh, don't, you know, make, choose a beach theme and then put like a, an industrial, <laughs> industrial uh, park or an industrial uh, wasteland uh, in there or like uh, objects that don't fit the thing, like a spinning gear or uh, futuristic uh, cars in the sand and stuff. I mean, you can if you want it, but uh, it's better if you choose a theme and stick to it and put every object on the driveline in the decoration that makes sense for the theme. So beginning, middle, end, have a theme. Make your theme. Number two, smooth out your driveline using custom collisions. Uh, this is a big one for me personally. I, I hate whenever I'm playing a track, whether it's uh, uh, you know one of the top rated ones or one that's you know, on the brand new trial speed. I hate playing a track where it's bumpy, like I'm driving in a straight line or I'm driving up a ramp and I notice my tires are, are bumping uh, up it or I'm driving down like if they're just bouncing, like why am my tires bouncing? So, so this, this is what's key. Whenever you're building a track, make sure you play it until you are sick of playing it because every single time that you play it, you will notice certain things that are wrong or certain things that could be improved rather. Uh, the driveline being smooth is incredibly important, especially to people who are uh, hardcore speedrunners. Like they want to get the best time possible. They're just like wanting to dominate those leaderboards and get be number one. It's if you have an inconsistent driveline where it's bumpy or you have no idea how your bike's going to react, uh, that's an automatic turnoff to like those hardcore players. So what I would recommend is that 
there, there are certain objects in the game which are pretty smooth by default. You don't really have to adjust them or touch them up at all. But there are some things called custom collisions, which are basically invisible boxes that you can lay uh, along your track. So, so if I'm placing an object that's kind of bumpy, uh, then, and I know it's inconsistent and kind of bumpy, I'll place a custom collision right over the top of it to make it smooth, to make it, uh, to make it consistent, and to make it, uh, make it uh, better for speedrunners and everybody overall. Number three is have realistic metal times. So don't, don't make your platinum metal, to achieve platinum metal, uh, a time that cannot be achieved. Uh, that's an automatic turnoff as well to people that are hardcore trials fanatics because they want to get that platinum. They want to get, you know, the, the best that they can get. Uh, don't make them too easy too. Like don't put, you know, oh, well, you can fault 10 times and, and be 10 minutes into it and still get platinum. So uh, I, I've done this by accident where I just like, okay, my track's good and I upload it and like, oh crap, I forgot to set the metal times. It happens to everybody uh, by accident, <laughs> but uh, don't let it happen not by accident. Uh, just be careful and try to put realistic metal times. Uh, you want to make the platinum metal basically uh, achievable with with certain expectations. Like if, if you want to make a uh, a medium difficulty track, uh, don't don't make the metal times just ridiculously unrealistic to where only like the top 0.01% of people can get it. Number four, don't allow bikes that can't complete the track. So if you're gonna if you're gonna make a track just make it to where only the bikes that can pass the track are available. So, uh, I mean, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, it's pretty self-explanatory. Don't uh, let your track, don't let players be able to select the slowest bike available if that bike is unable to pass certain obstacles in your track. So that's, that's that. Just test out your own track using all bikes and then just allow the bikes that are able to pass uh, to that track. That's basically it. That's number four. Number five is uh, choose the track's difficulty comparatively to the built-in tracks. So, so if you're a really good rider and you've never built before, like, oh, I, I can just knock out those extreme tracks. They're easy, they're nothing. So don't make an extreme track that, that, would, that would be labeled extreme in the game and label it as easy because it's misleading and it turns a lot of players off immediately, uh, even, even pro players. Uh, I've, I've actually rated tracks down that were okay tracks, but they were they were way off when it came to the difficulty. Like there would be some extreme uh, some extreme obstacles in there, but the difficulty would be labeled medium. So uh, that's that's just my stance on it. Uh, I would just you know play through the built-in tracks of all the previous Trials games if you haven't already, uh, just to kind of get familiar with uh, what what's expected of an easy, medium, hard, and extreme track, and just set your own track difficulty comparatively. So just don't, don't make it overkill, don't make it way too easy or too hard, and then label it wrong. Uh, that, just, that just messes everybody up. So don't do it. Easy, another easy one. Uh, number six, uh, choose a unique thumbnail for your track. Uh, this will be seen by everybody. Don't take a picture of the writer or the base editor world. It just looks lazy. Don't do it. <laughs> so uh, your thumbnail is incredibly important. It's, it's more important than a lot of people realize because it's kind of like, people flipping through a magazine or, or scrolling up and down a website, if they see something that catches their eye, they're gonna pay more attention to it. So if you're gonna, if you want your track to stand out, take a unique picture, one that looks cool and kind of captures the essence of the track without being lazy. Like just don't take a picture of, of the bike or the rider or just like a checkpoint or something stupid or built in. Uh, just make it look unique, make it look interesting, so that when people see it, they do a double take. Oh, that one looks good. And pick it. So that's it. That That's all for that one. Okay, rule number one out here, always. No, never. Never, <laughs> never do these things. Rule number one for the nevers is uh, have inconsistent obstacle difficulty. This kind of goes along with uh, one of the things I mentioned earlier with the, the difficulty of the track. You want to label it correctly, but you also want to make it to where every single obstacle in your track is consistent with the difficulty that you selected. So for instance, if you put a track out as easy, it's an easy track. Let's say you have a bunch of easy jumps and, and everything's going smooth. And then all of a sudden there's a crazy extreme ninja obstacle right in the middle. Uh, that's a no-no <laughs> because it's inconsistent and it doesn't match your track's difficulty. Uh, what you had selected. So that is uh, my number one thing for, for that because that, that can just kill it. That can just kill it. It can be a total buzzkill and it can ruin a track from 
from being great. It could be a good track, but it could be great if the obstacles were just tweaked a little bit. Uh, okay, so number two, uh, have sudden camera angle changes. Do not do that. <laughs> do not have sudden camera angle changes. So uh, you can cut, you can set your custom camera. Uh, like if you wanted to keep the built-in camera, which is you know follows the rider uh, in its default mode, that's totally fine, and that's what I would personally recommend, uh, just because it's it's kind of tweaked to perfection. I mean, Red Links knows what they're doing when it can, when it comes to how the camera behaves. So I would only use a custom camera in special modes. Like if you want to make a a really cool ending for your track and you want to have like cool camera angles that zoom or go to a different angle or whatever you want to do. Uh, I would I would reserve special camera angles for two things. Uh, special events like the ending or like massively huge jumps and you want to get like a crazy angle. That, that would technically work even though I'm the only thing I would do with that is kind of pan it back a little bit which I've done a few times in my tracks just to kind of get a wider angle but I wouldn't do anything crazy like do an overhead cam or like flip it to the other side or something weird like that. That's that's too much. It's too sudden. Uh, it's it's jarring and it just kills the experience. So don't do it. Number three of the nevers is uh, overuse effects. They appear tacky. So if you want to make a track and you want to have a uh, fire exploding every uh, every other second or or electrical shocks or fireworks, uh, I mean you can do those things. That's totally fine. But make it fit your theme and just don't overuse it. Because uh, same, same thing with like spamming objects. I expect that whenever Trials Rising comes out, uh, people are gonna make tracks with skulls everywhere and just make them really big red skulls and like just do stupid crap like that. It's gonna happen. Uh, so don't overuse effects or similar objects. Just don't spam the same thing over and over again because it looks lazy and tacky and it's not gonna make your track any better. That's just my, my personal stance on it. Uh, just put some thought into your track. Put some thought into the decor. Uh, so number four, this one pisses me off. Don't use floating objects, please, God. Floating objects, like, if, so even if your track is good, even if it's a good track and the drive line is smooth and uh, you know the obstacles kind of flow into each other naturally, uh, you have to make it realistic to, I mean, to an extent. I mean, Trials is a physics-based game, but you also want to make it look like a legitimate location. So you can't just have like a ramp floating in midair and then your rider just jumps off of a floating ramp. That just looks stupid, it's unrealistic, and it looks lazy, and it is. So don't do it. Uh, at least put like some metal supports or wooden supports or have it sitting on a rock or just do something. Make it to where it's not floating anymore, for God's sakes. Uh, it's not hard, just <laughs> put a little something underneath it just to make it look more realistic. That's all I got, do not put floating objects obstacles, things like that, unless it's part of the theme. Like if, and I've seen this before, where you have like floating islands where they're just like those obstacles on these floating islands, that's totally fine. If it's part of your theme and you've worked it into the scenery and it's part of your theme, yeah, absolutely. But uh, I mean, don't just take the base world, put some floating wooden planks and then make a track out of it. That's, that's amateur hour. And last but not least of the nevers, don't make a don't move track, please. Please don't do that. There have been so many of these things. So many don't move tracks in Trials Evolution, Trials Fusion, and I'm sure Trials Rising will get a good ton of them, but why, God? Why? Why, why, why? They're, they're so lazy. People that aren't familiar with the editor at all uh, take a look at these don't move tracks and like, ooh, wow, we spent a lot of time on it. I mean, to get everything perfect and you don't even hold the controller or do anything with it and your rider just flies through all these obstacles all automatically, Wow, it must have taken a really long time. When in reality it doesn't, because whenever you're in the editor, you press, you know, you press a button and it activates the physics, and then you can just see how your rider reacts to certain obstacles. And if you need to adjust it, you can go in there and change the angle or change the position and, and make it work. So you can technically make an entire don't move track from beginning to end without ever testing out the track uh, or actually being in the track to test it. You can just activate physics and then like, okay, well I'm done, and then publish it. It takes like, it's one of the laziest track ideas ever. And it's not even fun. Like, why would you want to play Trials just to set the controller down? It doesn't make any sense. Can somebody please tell me why? Why people make this shit? Uh, I, just, I just don't get it. That's my, that's, that's my rant. Please don't make a don't move track. And if, if you know anybody that's made a don't move track, tell them to stop. Tell them to just, just please leave Trials Rising alone. Just don't even touch the editor. If that's all you're gonna do is don't move tracks, please. But that's it, simple rules. So I'm just gonna recap. The always, 
Here's the here of the always, always. Choose a theme, smooth out your drive line using custom collisions if necessary. Have realistic metal times. Don't allow bikes that cannot complete the track. Choose a track's difficulty comparatively to the built-in tracks. Choose a unique thumbnail for your track. Never, <laughs> never have inconsistent obstacle difficulty. Never have sudden camera angle changes. Do not overuse effects or obstacles. Don't have floating objects and don't make, don't move tracks. So, so the always and the nevers. If, if you follow those rules, generally speaking, you're gonna come out with a good track. Uh, it may not be a complete masterpiece that changes the world, but it won't be a terrible track that people are just gonna forget in two seconds. So, uh, I mean, that's it. I mean, if you wanna add more, uh, add more decor into it or put more thought into it. I mean, there are some other things you can do to you know, boost your track and make it seem more unique, uh, like creating a custom object. Like you can put a bunch of different objects together to create a new object, uh, you know, kind of like an optical illusion. Like uh, back in the Trials Evolution days, uh, I made a few tracks or I helped make a few tracks for uh, the track team Sons of Trials. Uh, and we made, I, I helped with three tracks, I think. One of them was called uh, Nowhere USA, where I literally made, there was a plate with a burger, a, a cheeseburger on it, and some french fries and ketchup. None of that's in the game. But we, we made it using uh, using a bunch of different objects. The, the burger was made out of skulls. So, yeah, you just, just get creative with it. You can make whatever you want as long as you know how to make it. So... That's all I got. Thanks for watching. Please share this with everybody who is interested in Trials Rising and maybe potentially jumping into the editor because lots can be done and there are lots of possibilities. You can, If you can think it, you can make it. And that's what's so awesome about it. I'm looking forward to it. I'll see you guys in February and I've got a lot of trial stuff planned for this channel, including some uh, some cool streams, some uh, all kinds of stuff. I don't want to go over all my little, all my devious plans, but you'll, you'll see soon enough. Alright, thanks for watching. You have a great day.